Welcome to my cultures of Latin America. Tearless, where I'll be going through all of the new DLC cultures, showing them off in game, showing you how the districts work, and of course, then referring back to our tier list to rank them. If you wouldn't mind, I would love it if you could nuke the like button before we begin. These videos take quite a lot of wrangling. Let's roll. I'll compare the cultures relatively and appropriately within their eras, and of course, we'll start from the ancients with the Karalans. The Karalans are a neat one. Their trait, cooperative spirit, basically increases the adjacency bonus of farmers quarters with other farmers quarters likewise for makers market and research quarters you essentially get plus one food on farmers quarter per adjacent farmers quarter so on and so forth it's a great trait but of course not super strong early on because you probably don't have many districts to begin with but as you move through the game this is a trait that just keeps giving more and more and generally speaking you're probably planning districts kind of like this anyway so it's a pretty easy one to take advantage of their emblematic quarter the ceremonial plaza provides plus two faith per adjacent district and it allows you to construct districts on it near adjacent tiles, just like the hamlet does, except you can only build it near the coast and lakes, so it's a bit more restricted than the hamlet. It of course has the standard negative 10 stability. Essentially what you're getting here is the ability to build districts near the coastline early on, and some extra faith, which is probably at its most useful early in the game. The relative power of faith tends to wane off a little bit as the game progresses. Obviously, the ceremonial plaza does not provide a lot of yield. And then finally, we have their healers, the emblematic unit, a neat one that heals plus five health per turn while outside of friendly territories to all of your units within their army. At this part in the game where it's useful, you can only have a maximum of four units per army. And I have to say the healers are a little weak relative to warriors and archers and all that kind of thing. At 16 combat strength, they don't quite have the gusto to keep up with the default units. It makes them relatively weak, in my opinion. And when you combine that with the fact that one of them is only healing for five hit points, and you may not actually be that far away from your territories with your armies, i.e. you might not actually be in that much neutral territory, or at least you'll be close enough that you can get back to friendly in a couple of turns. I don't think that the plus five health is all that useful, and therefore they end up being, for me at least, kind of just like a weak warrior. It's for that reason that I think that the Karalans are actually straight down the middle, a B-tier culture. I think their trait is fantastic. But everything else kind of lets them down a little bit. But man, that trait is good and scalable, very easy and effective to use. In the classical era, we have the Nazca, whose trait provides us with something really spicy. If you have a territory with a natural wonder in it, there should be a few in the game, although of course quite a bit of RNG involved there, you'll be able to build an additional one of your emblematic districts inside of that territory. So you'll be able to build two of your emblematic districts in one territory, providing it has a natural wonder. It's pretty good, but I actually don't think it's brilliant because really all it's doing is providing you with essentially as if you've got one extra territory, right? Territories allow us to build one emblematic district by default, Ones with natural wonder will allow you to build two. Great. But really all that's doing is effectively treating me as though I own one additional territory. You might argue that the adjacency bonus of being able to build multiple emblematic districts in one territory next to each other provides some value. Although most of the time, most emblematic quarters don't actually have adjacency bonuses that are that spectacular. However, their trait does of course combine well with their own emblematic quarter, the Nazca Lines, providing plus two influence on emblematic districts and plus one faith on emblematic districts. This will of course double with your trait. So there is absolutely some synergies with their traits, but I don't think it's actually that spectacular when you really think about it. Their emblematic quarter providing influence and faith is at least timed very well. Influence and faith, very useful particularly in my opinion, earlier in the game. That goes especially for faith if you're trying to quickly overwhelm a foreign religion. Likewise with societal influence with the uh, plus two influence generation. Unfortunately, you're not getting any industry or science or food. So you're not getting any core firms resources here. Finally, their uh, emblematic unit, the Headhunters, are actually a, a fairly neat and fairly strong unit at 26 combat strength, upgrading from the existing warriors, no real requirements. It's a solid unit. Unfortunately, 
I don't really rate NASCAR as a particularly powerful culture. Their trait is really fun, don't get me wrong, especially with the changes to Natural Wonders. But I just don't think they're that good. I think they're slightly worse than the Catalans, but not by that much. I'm going to place them at an unfortunate, but close, C tier. In humankind's medieval era, we have been introduced to the agrarian culture, which is very cool, the Tainor. The Tainor have a pretty straightforward setup. Their trait provides plus five food per number of territories within your sphere of influence. So it's really important that you have sphere of influence on your cities and outposts. Otherwise, you're not getting an out. But plus five food, it's good enough. Realistically, it's maybe only half of a farmer's quarter, though. Their emblematic quarter, the Batty, provides plus 10 stability, so it's actually one that provides stability to us, and plus 10 influence, providing your city is stable. Plus 10 influence is a pretty decent yield from a quarter. You do, of course, have that little prerequisite that your city must be stable. Thankfully, this thing provides stability as well. It's a really interesting uh, combination here, right, of food and influence. And that's what they do really well. The trait at least synergizes well with the emblematic quarter. Again, not receiving a lot in the way of the core FIMS resources here, but that might not be a problem for you. Their emblematic unit I am a particular fan of, the Baira Hunters. These 31 strength, 3 range, of course, like most ranged units in humankind, are a very powerful unit. They remind me a lot of the English Longbowmen from uh, other games because of how uh, relatively cheap and early they are to unlock. And their relative high strength. 31 is pretty good. Overall, the Taino are a fairly straightforward, simple culture to play. In fact, they're probably the most simple, the most basic in the entire set. I think that they are perhaps slightly stronger than Nazca, thanks to their slightly better unit and greater synergy that doesn't require the RNG of having, say, a natural wonder in your territory. And it's for that reason that I rank the Taino at a B tier. Taking a slight break away from the paid Cultures of Latin America DLC, we have the Mississippians, who were released as part of the Mississippian Ascent community event for free. Whew, bit of a tongue twister. The Mississippians are a uh, industrial builder culture. They are in the same era as Tynal, so two choices to choose from here. And what do they provide? Their trait is flowing waters. It's, this is quite a good one. Plus three industry on industry producing districts on a river. Likewise plus three money for money producers, and plus three food for food producers. Now, it does require a river, but you should have these anyway, or at least you should be beelining towards them because they tend to be territories that are much better for food and industry alike. Of course, there are other cultures that could synergize here too, but I won't factor that in entirely, although if you started with the Harappans, you will be away laughing, but I'm not going to factor that in to my ranking here. Their emblematic quarter, the Sacred Mound, really uh, builds even greater strength. It has a minus 50% industry cost reduction for adjacent districts. So assuming you can build it in a relatively open place, maybe there's already one spot built because you've had to sort of get out and build it. You could probably build maybe three, four, five districts at half price. It also provides plus three industry on religious districts, plus three faith on them as well, and plus two money on adjacent tiles. This thing is an absolute powerhouse. Absolute powerhouse. I really like it. Uh, it does, of course, uh, have that synergy with religious districts, so something to keep in mind. But overall, it's a really solid build. It combines reasonably well, but not perfectly with their trait. Thankfully, their trait is already very good. Their emblematic unit, their raiders, is also, I think, fairly decent. At 36 strength, it's a little stronger than what the Tainor had to offer. Four movement, one range, though, of course, because we're dealing uh, with melee here. Door each enemy unit destroyed in battle increases this unit's combat strength. So it's got a nice little uh, bonus there as well. A fairly decent one, actually. I think the Mississippians are probably the best culture that we've ranked so far, and I rank them at an A tier. In humankind's what I believe to be relatively average early modern era, we have the Inca introduced, a wonderful culture that many players of Forex strategy games will be well familiar with, I'm sure. Their trait, on a condor's wings, provides plus 50% road movement speed on unit, so you'll move through along your roads 50% uh, faster. This is actually 
pretty good. And of course, you'll keep it for the rest of the game. You'll be much more agile on land than anyone else. You also get plus three food on districts per adjacent mountain. This is, of course, applied retrospectively as well. So any districts that were already built adjacent to mountains will get this too. It does, of course, require mountains. But in my experience, not really that hard to come by on an average map in humankind. So I consider this to be a fairly decent trait. Their emblematic quarter, of course, builds on this wonderfully, the Terrace Farm, providing an additional plus three food per adjacent mountain. You're going to have a lot of food from Dim Mountains. You also receive a minus 25% territory attachment cost on adjacent territories, making your expansion much cheaper. You're an expansionist culture, so there's a little bit of synergy there. And you get plus two vision range. Probably not massive, but it works. You can also construct new districts on adjacent tiles to it, so you can use it, again, a little bit like a hamlet, like the Catalans with their coastline and their lakes, but this time with mountains. This is a very good district, and because it exploits tiles around it and mountains are often very industrial, you often end up with, or at least in my experience, I usually end up with a district that's not only giving me a good amount of food, but probably also giving me industry and potentially other yields too. Their emblematic unit, I also only really have good things to say about this one. It's a fairly cheap anti-cavalry unit. This is a particularly good era for anti-cavalry as well. It fits in really nicely uh, in the meta. And at 43 combat strength and 4 movement, which is more likely to be closer to 6 because of your trait, it's a powerhouse. A powerhouse that doesn't really require any resources either. So it's cheap to unlock, it's powerful, and it's much stronger when fighting from high ground and fortified positions, which is probably good for you because you like mountains. I think that the Inca are a, a very, very good culture, and I rank them at a high A tier. Sliding into the industrial era comes the Argentinians, the first part of our beef and pills strategy, if you've catched us live. Their trait, Land Rush, provides plus one farmer's slot on city per luxury resource deposit. Woof. And plus one trader's slot on city per strategic resource deposit. So if you've got a lot of population and you need jobs to be filled... Here are a huge number of jobs available to you, providing you have some resources, which by this point in the game, you absolutely do. I consider this to be quite a good trait, although of course it does rely on you having the population to fill these jobs. Without having population to fill the jobs, it's not really that useful. Their emblematic quarter though, oh boy, it is brilliant. It creates a new deposit of salted beef, which is automatically exploited. So it's a brand new resource for you every time you build one of these emblematic quarters. What do they do? Well, alongside providing a resource, tradable, blah, 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 you also get plus four stability per beef on all cities and a minus 2% army upkeep per salted beef on your army. It's a really interesting one. You get a lot of stability out of it, which will allow your cities to grow better and you can upkeep your army cheaper with the Argentinians, and of course keep that for the rest of the game, while also hopefully building up additional food and money from your trade. Their emblematic unit is a little bit harder to muster than the rest, not only because it's later in the game, but just because of those overall requirements. However, it is fairly powerful with six movement, four range, and 48 strength. It only requires three horses, so while it is a slightly high requirement, you should have already been able to meet that, and once you've got the technology unlocked, you'll be away and laughing. It's a gunner unit, so it does present that strength, and of course it's a mounted gunner unit as well. I think it's fairly decent, and overall, the Argentinians are a pretty good culture. Their ability to build a luxury resource on every territory that provides stability is by far and away probably their best feature, although everything else goes along pretty nicely with them. I consider the Argentinians to be an A-tier culture. And last, but by certain not least, the Cubans, who I have to say are probably emerging as my favorite culture in the DLC pack. Their trait, internationalism, provides plus one combat strength per alliance on unit. Alliance buffs, generally not amazing in humankind, at least they haven't been so far. Plus one combat strength will also be given to an allied empire's units, so you and your friends will have extra strength on your units. Nice enough. You'll also get plus 10% influence per alliance. In a game with lots of players, you can get quite the modifier to your influence here, and you're probably looking to play more of a peaceful game with them anyway, so it likely fits in well. As an aesthetic culture, it's also pretty useful for you because you'll be earning your stars. Influence stars, 
many players would argue are slightly harder to get than the rest as well. Their emblematic quarter, though, is where they really shine. Like the Argentinians with their salted beef, these guys produce pharmaceuticals pills. It creates a new deposit of pharmaceuticals per emblematic quarter. It provides a whopping plus 10 stability per pills on all cities. A reminder that the Argentinians provided four per salted beef. This is two and a half times better. It also provides, get this, plus one food per population per pharmaceuticals. There's a few steps to that. Plus one food, okay. Per pop, okay. So I've got like 80 pop on my city. That's plus one food per 80. Per pills. Holy cow. That is an insane amount of food. <laughs> and accidentally playing a game with them the other day where I didn't even set up other good cultures earlier on with food, I ended up with cities with easily over 10,000 food production each in excess, easily filling those Argentinian jobs from earlier. Their emblematic unit, to be honest, doesn't even matter because their quarter is just that good. <laughs> but it's a 56 strength. Four movement, four range gunner. It's decent. But honestly, you're probably not going to be using it all that often. It's entrenched, it's dug in, it's, it's a very nice unit, don't get me wrong. But really, the Cubans absolutely shine with their emblematic quarter. This thing is insanely powerful. Overly, overly, overly overpowered, to say the least. The Cubans are without a doubt the best culture in the DLC, in my opinion. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments below. I'm sure that you will on at least a few things. Maybe Nazca. Maybe not the Cubans, but I would like your feedback, so do let me know. Here is my final rankings for the Cultures of Latin America DLC. I think that the Cubans are a step above the rest. The Argentinians are like the Cubans light, so they also present some real strength. The Incans and the Mississippians coming in perhaps just behind and then the rest. That's my ranking. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.